My name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. I'm an audiologist and strength coach. I specialize in vestibular disorders and you are on my channel, The Steady Coach. Today we're going to be talking about how to overcome the fear of your symptoms. So at this point, maybe you've taken my free course on chronic dizziness, which I'll link to below if you haven't. Maybe you've seen some of the other videos on my channel and you've reached the conclusion that indeed danger mode in your brain is what's keeping your chronic dizziness symptoms going. And maybe at this point you've logically concluded from that that your reactions to and fear of the symptoms are a driving force in why the symptoms keep going. And now maybe you're feeling a little bit stuck. Maybe you have the information you need. Maybe you've traced back your dizziness to the stress that started it all. Maybe you've looked into the issues that have been bothering you and yet you're having a lot of trouble dealing with this hypervigilant response to and fear of the symptoms. So that's what this video is about. So let's just normalize this for a second. When you have a sudden onset of crazy symptoms like dizziness, it is normal to have a huge fear response. Some of you had your symptoms come on gradually, some of you had a big bang attack, and some of you are in between. But the fact of the matter is, dizziness makes you feel completely disconnected from your body, it can be a rather traumatic experience. And one of the things I've said in my previous videos is that from my perspective, our body's main job is to make sure that we can stay alive and get away from things that are problematic. So when you don't have a good sense of where your body is in space, which is a big part of what your vestibular system is supposed to be telling you, then you can't effectively get away from or fight off an attack on you. It's a very disorienting feeling. It makes people feel very helpless and vulnerable. It's very alienating and it very frequently overwhelms your capacity for stress. All three of these are part of the definition of a traumatic experience. So not to say that onset of dizziness qualifies for everyone as a trauma, but it can be quite a traumatic experience to have this dizziness come on the way that it does. And this naturally causes people to have a big fear response. And on my channel, I give you a bunch of different tools for dealing with this fear. The first one is education. When you understand that the dizziness is coming from a completely normal nervous system overreaction, either to stress or to the dizziness itself, it makes you feel a lot less helpless. It makes you feel like you have agency in your recovery and that reduces that fear response. The second one is stress reduction because as we talked about, your capacity being overwhelmed is part of why you develop this big fear response. So by decreasing some of the other stressors in your life and having you work on those, you have more capacity to deal with the things that are happening to you right now. The third thing we talk about on my channel is the importance of connection and that directly combats the fear response by making you feel safe. Connection is safety. And the fourth way we talk about combating fear is to practice apathy for which you can use tools like somatic tracking. In other words, you're practicing being not reactive to the symptoms. And when you practice, even in short bursts, being not reactive to and accepting of the symptoms, they tend to get a lot less scary. And again, that fear response goes down. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've probably tried one or more of those four strategies. If you haven't, I strongly encourage you to try those. And I'll link to some videos in the video description below where you can learn more about those particular strategies. But the fifth strategy, the one we're going to talk about today, is one that's particularly useful for directly combating fear, and that is practicing curiosity. So we talked just a few minutes ago about how fear is a very normal expected response to having dizziness symptoms. So now let's talk about how people respond to fear. Well, 
I don't think this is gonna come as a big surprise to you guys, but normally people deal with fear in one of two ways. People either try to run from it, so they try to distract themselves, they try to focus on other stuff, those are all ways of running away from fear, or they try to fight fear. They try to educate themselves more on what might be driving their symptoms. They try to find ways of fixing their symptoms. They see a bunch of different doctors. You might have done a little bit of both throughout your dizziness journey, but here's the hard part about all this. In both cases, either when you're running away from the fear or when you're fighting the fear, you are actually serving to increase the fear response. While these are completely normal and understandable responses to the kind of fear that you're feeling about your dizziness, they're counterproductive. Because by either trying to run away or fight the fear that you're feeling, or to run away from or fight the symptoms you're having, you're actually teaching your brain to do more of that. You're teaching your brain that the symptoms are actually dangerous, that it should pay more attention to them, that it should turn the volume dial up on them even more because it's something to fear. So in a way, the way that you might be reacting to your fear, the way that you might be reacting to your symptoms is actually making things worse. And of course, I'm saying this completely without blame. It is a completely normal human response to respond that way when something really scary is happening. And that's why we spend so much time on this channel talking about the first four things that I talked about a few minutes ago, specifically and especially education on the fact that even though your brain thinks this is a dangerous signal, it actually isn't. But this is where practicing curiosity comes in. You might wanna think about this one for a moment. Instead of doing something, either trying to escape from or fight against the symptoms. Have you ever actually just sat with the feeling of fear and dug into it just a little bit more? Because what I have found really interesting is that when I sit with people about their fears, it's actually almost never about the symptoms themselves. So when I ask people, what are you afraid of when you're talking about the symptoms coming back or the symptoms getting worse or staying as they are? Invariably, the answers sound like this. I'm worried that I can't handle it. It's really uncomfortable. I'm gonna be overwhelmed. I'm gonna be handicapped for life. And then I ask, okay, what does that mean? What's the fear there? What if you had the symptoms stay forever? What would that mean? And then we start uncovering some really interesting stuff. So what I usually uncover from that line of questioning is that what we're really dealing with isn't so much fear of the symptoms themselves, but fear of what the symptoms might mean. And that is where the story that you're telling yourself might actually be increasing your fear when you're not actually afraid of the symptoms themselves. So here's how I would approach this. You want to notice first your reactive pattern. When the fear comes up, how do you respond? Do you try to fight it or do you try to run away from it? Fight or flight? Then ask yourself, what if I didn't do this? What would happen? So what if I didn't fight this? Would that mean that I would be seen as weak? Would that mean that I'm not a worthy person because I couldn't fight this off or couldn't fix it? Do you see yourself as the kind of person who must fix things in order to be a worthwhile person? Are you worried that your value is dependent on your ability to work or live some kind of normal life or be the person who's in charge of everyone else? And what if you stopped avoiding the fear or stopped avoiding the symptoms? What would happen then? Are you actually afraid that you would become overwhelmed and unable to cope? That other people would have to take care of you? That you might be abandoned because other people wouldn't wanna take care of you? Again, these are just examples, but this is the stuff that's actually underlying the reactions you're having to fear. Fear is just a signal. When your brain sends a signal of fear, it's to let you know something is happening. So what you're identifying as fear of the symptoms is actually fear of the story that you're telling yourself about the symptoms, not actually just the signal of fear itself. So this is where if you add a little compassion to the curiosity you just showed yourself, you can work through the fear. What about hearing yourself out and understanding your fears and offering yourself a little bit of compassion for what you're really experiencing underneath. 
What about sitting with the fear without telling yourself that story or trying to react to it the way that you have? What about sitting with the sensation of fear instead of trying to fight it or fly away from it? What you'll find, and this will be very familiar to those of you who've tried somatic tracking, is that when you sit with fear without telling a story, the fear changes. Again, the fear is just a temporary signal that's being sent to you very graciously by your brain to help protect you. So when you're able to just sit with it without responding the ways that you've been responding, you're going to find that you can let it change the way it changes, which in my experience generally means that it fades away. That's not to say it won't come back in a few minutes, but the more you practice this, the less reactive you get to fear, the more useful you view the fear as being, the less it's going to fuel this symptom cycle that you're experiencing right now. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. And if you try out this technique, please drop a comment below and let me know how it went. Of course, if you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could like the video, share it, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys again for all your support and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.